Cyberpunk 2077 is finally here. It's not Half-Life 3, they actually released it. it. It's playable, sort of. And naturally with that, a lot of you are going to want to stream the game. However, while the original you know, system requirements for the bare minimum to run the game are actually quite modest, the, uh, the requirements to stream it if you're running it at a higher resolution or on higher settings can actually be pretty intense and put a big strain on your system if you're trying to get the most beautiful graphics out of Night City and things like that. So in this video, we are going to talk about the optimizations and settings you need to do both on your computer and in your streaming software to stream Cyberpunk 2077 with OBS here with ideally as little performance hiccups as possible. Right after a word from this video's sponsor, which is actually incredibly relevant if you're wanting to stream Cyberpunk. This video is brought to you by Nerd or Die and their new Glitch 2 Cyberpunk 2077 themed stream package, which features overlays, alerts, be right back and stream starting soon scenes, a whole chat box theme, and stinger transitions, along with other elements specifically designed for the Cyberpunk 2077 games theme. Now this is actually available as a free update if you already owned the Glitch 2 package. This is something that Nerd or Die does regularly when they add updates or you know, new features to packages you've already bought, you don't have to pay for them again. You just get that as a freebie. So if you already owned Glitch 2, then you can get the cool new webcam frames and the social media icons and all the new theming for free. Otherwise, pick it up for yourself. It is Glitch 2 with the Cyberpunk 2077 edition theme available at eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. I'm Eposvox, Vox, your stream professor, and today we're taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077 CD Projekt's Red Project Red's latest game. I always say that messed up because it's not project. It's not actually said project. Whatever. Anyway, the latest game that is from them that has had a lot of delays and a lot of drama surrounding it, but it's finally here and playable. So let's talk about streaming it. Now, first, we're going to cover from a single PC standpoint because dual PC, you can pretty much do whatever you want as usual, uh, but we will, we will be talking about dual PC as well. So for single PC setups, first, you need to actually prepare your system with various windows and driver settings for that now if you're using an nvidia graphics card at least there will be a game ready driver the day before cyberpunk's launch uh, so if you didn't have that already or you don't have that check it out download it uh it'll be on december 9th which this video should already be up by i uh, go ahead and download that latest game ready driver from nvidia amd should theoretically have one as well but i never know what amd's drivers on the Windows side of things, there's a couple things you want to look for. First and foremost, you want to be on the latest Windows 2004 update to Windows 10. So if you aren't, go to start and check updates. And if you are unsure, you can go ahead and check for updates and just it should pop up if you don't already have it. Upgrade to Windows 2004, latest build or whatever, and update that because there are some toggles that we're going to want to mess with that are specific to that Windows build. Next up, you want to turn on Windows game mode. Now, in previous years up to a couple years ago, I've always said to turn it off because it interfered with OBS. Because what game mode does is it prioritizes your game above most other things so that it gets the best performance and that background processes and things like that don't eat up your you know performance and make you drop frames. However, uh, as of a year or two ago, they have finally added OBS into the whitelist for that, which allows game mode to also prioritize OBS and help OBS and your game communicate to each other more effectively. So you wanna make sure that is turned on. And then of course, turn off the game DVR and the Windows game bar if you're planning on using OBS here, which is what we're mainly focusing on. Next up, we have two settings that you will want to do in either or for, and you will want to test, test, and more test to see which wor works best for you. There is a new feature in Windows 10 2004 called Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. This allows your graphics card to more effectively kind of juggle everything that's going on and theoretically should benefit stream performance. However, when it was first released for most of this year so far, it actually hurt OBS performance a lot. And generally the recommendation was to turn it off, leave OBS on admin and move forward. However, there is a fix in the latest NVIDIA drivers as well as um, the latest Windows updates that should actually allow it to prioritize your game. However, you should not run OBS as administrator while this feature is enabled. They essentially kind of do similar things for you, but having them both at the same time can cause conflicts and not help you. So you either enable GPU scheduling and then you can run OBS normally, not as administrator, which gets you drag and drop, drop support back as well as some other annoyances that running as admin brought you, or you run it as admin and then don't enable, make sure you disable this hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Now, the reason you would want to do this is 
because you may run into render lag or drop skipped or missed frames due to render or even encoding lag that is actually caused by your graphics card not being able to prioritize itself alongside your game. This has been an issue I've talked about for ever on this channel when it comes to streaming and I championed the release of the fix which meant you ran OBS as admin a little while back and I'll have a whole video linked in the description if you want to understand that but essentially you have to choose GPU scheduling or run OBS as admin and I would recommend doing some test streams if you already have OBS as admin do some tests you know streams or encodes and make sure it's all running smoothly if so then you don't really need to uh change anything for now but if you want to kind of relieve your dependency on running OBS as admin and you want to mess with GPU scheduling, just do some test streams with it first to make sure that it's still doing it because there will be some scenarios and some games where one helps you or, or the other one helps you more until they get it fully ironed out. But that is very important that you are only running one. Next up is of course your streaming software. Make sure it's updated to the latest version. In fact, OBS just has a new release client available if you wanna preview some new features. I wouldn't recommend that for your daily streams, but if you wanna get a preview, I'll have a separate video coming on that as well. But make sure it's updated to the latest public version and you on OBS, you can go to help check for updates and otherwise it pops it up automatically every time you launch OBS anyway, so you're probably good. And then you kinda of wanna make sure that you are optimizing your stream layout so that it isn't tanking your performance because a lot of things that I have encountered over the years when it comes to performance problems have to do with leaving media sources on scenes you don't reference most of the time that are checked to always run. I have a whole video dedicated to that, which can cause you additional render lag and things like that. And so if you haven't cleaned up or kind of minimized your scenes and sources, your scene collection and, you know, gotten it kind of condensed down to only what you need and use in a little while you got a bunch of extra stuff hanging out or plugins you don't use or whatever if you're planning on streaming cyberpunk i would say now's the time to kind of do some of that cleanup because remember obs works just like photoshop or video editor in that it is compositing everything you're doing on your scene into a frame and encoding that frame and doing so 60 times per second and so that is a lot of extra load on your graphics card and the less you have going on, the easier a time you will have. And so if there's a bunch of extra sources that are not, you know, running amok that you're not actually using or extra scenes that are still sort of active, even though they're not what's showing, you want to get rid of some of that stuff. All right, when it comes to OBS and sort of XSplit as well, turn off your previews. If you're worried about render lag or dropped frames or extra impact on your game performance as well, turn off your render previews once you are certain you've done your test streams and everything looks good. Right click OBS as preview, uncheck enable preview, and that will save you a little bit of processing power as well. If you're having some frame rate inconsistencies when it comes to using game capture or display capture for capturing your game, of course, game capture is more recommended. It's way better performing and yada yada. Uh, you can actually run it in borderless window mode to get a more stable frame rate. You just may lose out on some of the advantages of G-Sync and things like that. If you're still running into GPU overload issues when it comes to uh, streaming and, you know, your graphics card just is being used too much, you'll have to lower your in-game settings or set a frame rate cap of, say, 60 FPS, whatever you're streaming at, so that it stays more stable and OBS or your streaming software has more kind of overhead to operate. But also keep in mind, you have to be reaching your target frame rate in order to stream it. And so, for example, if you're getting 50 to 60 FPS, you're going to have a real hard time streaming 60 FPS because those frames aren't there to begin with most, most of the time. And your GPU, your graphics card is getting so overworked that it can't even keep up with that frame rate. Nevertheless, streaming on top of that. So that is worth keeping in mind as well. Always kind of target based on what you can actually reach. And you do want some degree of headroom. So if you're trying to stream 60 FPS, you need to be getting an average of at least 70 FPS in game. That way you have the room for that frame drop when you are running OBS to get the best out of it. If you're using NVENC, NVIDIA's graphics card encoder for your video encoding stream, which I talk about all the time, uh, you may want to turn off look ahead and set B frames to three if you're running into uh, performance issues with the encoder. If you're getting encoder overloaded or having some weird issues with that, I might change those settings as well. Lastly, for single PC streaming of Cyberpunk, I wanted to talk about NVIDIA Broadcast, their virtual green screen software, as well as noise removal stuff I've been talking about this year. The microphone stuff is fairly easy to run, like it does add extra load to your graphics card, but it's fairly easy to run alongside your game in general, so that's fine. The camera side of things, however, is very intense and it can use up even like one gigabyte of VRAM on your graphics card, which is a lot, especially for those of you with the lower VRAM uh, model graphics card. So if you only have four gigs or six gigs of video memory on your graphics card versus 10, 11, 12, you know, those kind, 
you're gonna run into some trouble there. So I would actually recommend just not using NVIDIA broadcast camera at all in this scenario. Use the nerd or die, you know, webcam frame that we showed in the ad spot and just set up a nice backdrop or something instead of using broadcast camera because it can use a lot of VRAM and Cyberpunk is gonna use a lot of VRAM, especially if you're cranking up the settings. If you're doing dual PC capture, of course you can send your video out as normal. You should already know what you're doing there to a capture card or through NDI. And in fact, NDI should have, by time this video goes up, no promises though, but they should have a new update to NDI, which allows you to stream up to 4K 120 FPS over your network using NDI. I covered this in a video a couple months ago. I'll have it linked below if you wanna learn more about that update overall, uh, but that is pretty sweet. So you have two options really to get your video from one PC to the other. You do have a third option um, when it comes to using your capture card that would allow you to maintain G-Sync support and potentially get a smoother frame rate that is you know, more cooperative with lower end capture cards in that you plug your graphics card into your capture card just for like you would do cloning, but set up an extended desktop instead and then use OBS's full screen preview to send that preview over your capture card in smooth 60 FPS to your streaming PC. And then you add in your webcam and all of your scenes and things like that on your streaming PC side. So your, your gaming side is doing less work. However, keep in mind that does still require OBS to maintain its frame rate on your gaming PC. So you'll still need to use either the GPU scheduling or running OBS as admin. You'll still, you know, need to be reasonable with your settings there, but that is an option available to you. And then you can run ham like you normally do with your encode settings and everything else because you're not gaming on that computer. So it doesn't really matter. Lastly, make sure you switch to streamer mode before starting streaming to avoid some DMCA strikes because Twitch is wild these days. That's all I've got for you today, at least until we have more time with the game. They smooth out some issues, you know, things like that. But I wanted to provide you with kind of a getting started guide for streaming Cyberpunk 2077 here since it will be quite the intense game for some of you who just want to crank it all up and see Keanu Reeves in all of his animated glory. And... You might run into some issues there. And as you can tell, I'm still in the middle of moving. I'm finally pulling games off shelves where it's, it's taken way longer than expected. So my video upload schedule is kind of lax, but let, you, let me know in the comments if you want to see me do more content like this for specific games. And I can even get, you know, individual social posts up, which is kind of some of the recommended settings and things like that as well. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm your stream professor, Eples Vox. I'll see you in the next video. Have some fun. Cyberpunk seems cool. I'll get to play it one day.